Iowa, a state that literally has more pigs than people, where the fields of corn and soybeans stretch farther than the eye can see. Nestled in those fields are towns that are uniquely Iowa, home to local businesses that have been passed down from generation to generation, towns that are the definition of community, towns that people grow to love so much that they never leave or find themselves returning to. Offering a glimpse into the history and culture of the region, we will show you a few of the towns that are not just surviving, but thriving. Explore with us between the cornfields, beyond the hustling and bustling cities, to the small towns hiding away. This is Elma, Iowa, a little slice of heaven where the town bell rings at 6 p.m. and its people thrive on their strong sense of community. Elma is unique. I've been here since uh, 1968, so the whistle blows at seven in the morning, noon and six, you know, so you know your kids are. Everybody knows everybody. Just ask somebody that, oh yeah, you know, they know. And I've only been here, like I said, over seven years, and I know most of the people, and I, I wouldn't give it up. With a population of approximately 500 citizens, it's a charming little place where everyone is your neighbor and you will find a helping hand around every corner. We are an inclusive community that works together with everybody. We're 505 people. This community sticks together. I mean, they work, we get a project, everyone gets involved in it. It's not just a few people. For a small town, you gotta do that if you're gonna survive. Otherwise, you are not gonna make it. Though the town may be small, there are plenty of activities in the community to enjoy. Oh, definitely the Bluebird. It brings a lot of people in. We have a brand new daycare here that's been going and been expanded. We have a new library. We have a community center that's full kitchen. Town of 500 with a clinic, it's open five days a week. Like five golf courses within a half an hour. Best locker in the state. And people come from all over there. We have, uh, they have groceries. What's not to like? If you're not chatting it up at the Elma Express gas station, you can fill your belly with a good meal at the Bluebird restaurant. Take a stroll over the wooden bridge on Main Street and much, much more. I bought the gas station, it would be two years ago this month. Over there, uh, I work a lot of the shifts also, but it's just seeing the regulars that come in, just because you have a bond with most of them and you know, figure out what they have going on in their life. And so that's nice. And over here, it's kind of the same way. So people just come in and hang out. For the small town that it is, uh, we have a big heart. And it's just an amazing community. Elma is truly unique. Small in size, but mighty with heart, soul, and hardworking people who grind hard on the weekdays and play even harder on Saturday evenings. It's just a nice place. We look out for each other and it's just a friendly family atmosphere. So it's a good place to live. If you've never been to a small town, you need to come to Elma because everything's here you need. If you want to live in a small town, this would be the town to come to because we got it. It's no wonder this town is thriving. It's safe to say when that town bell rings at 6 p.m., everyone here feels safe and where they belong, right here at home in Elma, Iowa. All right, next up on the tour is a small town called Grundy Center. I, Berlin Kloss, will be your guide to all the things that Grundy Center has to offer. Grundy Center is a unique uh, little community. Um, the people of this town um, make a really concerted effort when they do something to do it extremely well. Um, there's no let's do it cheap and and do it again. It's let's do it right the first time and then we'll be then it's good for good and uh, good for a long time. So we've got a, a very positive active economy um, in town. Um, it's become a, a little bit of a shopping hub uh, and uh, a little more of a destination uh, arrival instead of just a pass-through. Um, uh, 
We have a wonderful hospital. Uh, it's rated in the top 3% in the country. Um, and our school system is top notch. Um, uh, we've got some good solid industry here in town, so it's, uh, it's, it's a very good community and very solid economically. I've never lived in a small town, so this was a totally new experience for me. Um, I've lived in Atlanta, Chicago, Oklahoma City. So moving from Waterloo to a smaller town like this, because our population is about 2,800 here, was, was an adjustment. But my daughter and her husband and my four grandkids are here, so that made it much easier because now I'm just like literally next door to them. I wouldn't have had that if I were in any other part of the state or the country. So that's really worth the move and the change and the, just the adjustment. Well, um, you know, I would say that I started five years ago and in the midst of COVID, my husband had a stroke and was not able to work for about nine months and the community really rallied to make sure I could stay afloat and um, supported us in all sorts of different ways. And I think that is one of the reasons I'm still here. And you know, a lot of places didn't survive through COVID, but I was very, very supported during that time. So I've just continued to grow since day one. I've, I have yet to take a dip in sales. So um, I'm really, really blessed to be part of just such a great community, which is why I haven't really found another place to expand yet. Um, people ask me all the time if I'd like to start another coffee shop, but I don't know. If, I don't know. I haven't found that community yet that feels right to me. I mean, there's lots of great communities out there, but this, this is just good for now, and it's, it's really growing at the rate that is all I can handle right now. Um, well, we have a really good school district. We have um, big soccer fields and baseball diamonds. We have some nice baseball diamonds and we have a variety of parks plus different activities to do in this town, like the movie theater, the bowling alley. Oh, a Norman Rockwell painting. Friendly, welcoming, um, and supportive. Happy, local, caring positive, it's two words with hardworking. I really, uh, not necessarily a story, but um, I did a little uh, video piece for our, our community a while back, and um, the comment I made, or that I ended with, was I have literally gone around the world, and I have looked for another Grundy Center, and I have yet to find it. Um, it's, a, it's just a unique um, attitude and atmosphere. It's, uh, it, I, I can think of no better place to live. Welcome to Sumner, Iowa. Sumner was incorporated into a town in 1894. Well, I think it's a town that's, that's kept the population pretty much the same. So it's pretty much all rural ag related with farm equipment and uh, if things need to be fixed up why they all pitch in and do it. Today I had the opportunity to interview some Sumner residents along with some business owners. Let's start with the owners first and see what's going on there. My husband and I have had have owned Sumner Building Center since for nine years but the actual business has been here since 1890. Next year will be our 10 year anniversary of the business and we're so excited about that. And so in the next five years, we really see ourselves still being here in Sumner and um, just continuing to have the drafting and design program and free delivery up to a whole bunch of different small towns all around Northeast Iowa. I've been in business since 2018. Um, my inspiration really was kind of just a mix of growing up, but then also my relationship with my sister was really strong and we started this together. Ferndale is named after a family property of mine and it was just always a magical place to be as a child. So I knew when I was opening up a brick and mortar that I wanted to be called Ferndale. 
my favorite part of running this business is definitely buying stuff, outsourcing it, you know, and then also secondly would be making sure it gets into the hands of people who also enjoy vintage, retro, weird. Oh, I knew that this was going to be a, a fresh start for us. Hearing from the owners, as you can tell, Sumner is really growing. So I decided to go out and ask a few strangers. Here's what they had to say. Uh, people should really uh, seek out the library, of course. So that's usually my, my go-to. Not only is it a beautiful building on the outside and the inside, but there's so much that we have to offer. And, you know, even if someone's just here to visit, to peruse, there's so much to see. And then we have beautiful parks in town. There's beautiful green spaces as well that those places are all free. <laughs> and that's, that's not even places that you, of course, have to pay money to see. So it's just such simple, free things to begin with. We have a lot of shops. Our main street is really, it's grown a lot in the past probably five to seven years. We have a lot of murals that in the past few years have just been put up. Those are really fun. Um, our parks, we have four or five different parks uh, that have a lot of different activities. Our library is really nice. Um, again, probably our downtown. We have a, a lot going on downtown. We have a lot of antique shops, a um, couple clothing stores, and um, our hospital is a big thing for a small community like this to have such a nice big hospital. The walking trail actually is runs right along on top of where the railroad used to be. One of the kind of cool things that they've kept around is um, our spirit bell up by the high school. That was always a tradition going way back that for the anytime there was a win, then you get to either come home or walk up and go to the victory bell and ring the bell. So that was always really cool. That was fun thing to look forward to, kind of a celebratory thing. Memories are forever is the museum that we have in town it has tons of uh, town memorabilia. We didn't start the museum until 80, 60 something, I think, when they finally closed it from having kids go to school here. I think the, my favorite part is you start looking at things from way back when. So it's really interesting to see all the kids that have went through high school here and some you forgot and some just kind of refresh your memory who did go here. Uh, the building that it's in actually used to be the original high school and I'm pretty sure like grades K through 12 were in there at one time. Um, yeah, it's a really unique building. It's really, really cool to see. It has a lot of charm. My favorite part about Sumner is being close to my family. I like the sense of community and the close-knit. I think probably the friendliness, <coughs> friendliness to people and being willing to help. Sumner is a welcoming place. There's a, a wide variety of people here who do different things, who have different backgrounds, and, you know, everyone is welcome. The people that live here, that's what make up your town. I just, I love being able to talk with people every day. All in all, Sumner seemed like a pretty good place. And from what I've heard, it's a good place to stop in and explore the town. You're sure to have a blast. Welcome to Waverly. My name is Brady Wheeler, and I'd like to show you around some of the best parts of Waverly and talk with a few of its residents. Check it out. Waverly was first settled in 1850. It all started out as a dirt road going right down the middle of downtown Waverly. It has been growing ever since. My name is Adam Hoffman and I am Waverly's 51st mayor. I became mayor on January 2nd of 2020 after running a campaign in 2019 and I'm in my second term. What makes Waverly stand out or thrive? Our community stands out and thrives on several different things. We've got great outdoor spaces through our parks with our leisure services program. Our school district is, you know, growing and thriving in the in the manner that it's a, a respected school district. We have a lot of open enrollment. 
We have Wartburg College on in our community that is a, a focal point for you know aspiring um, people that want to learn and get careers. In your opinion, what are some of the best locations in Waverly? Some of the best locations in Waverly that I really truly appreciate is our parks and open space. We've got several parks that also offer a Frisbee golf course. We have a traditional golf course. Um, we have got the river access for boating, kayaking, fishing, all those types of activities. But we can't dismiss the, the wonderful uh, you know, venue that Wartburg College presents itself as well. What do you like best about towns this size? Towns of this size of about that 10,000 um, census, there's, uh, it's a great mix of different personalities, cultures, um, be it age as well. Our school district has you know, fairly decent sized classes where you get younger families that are having those kids go through school. We've also got Wartburg College that has you know, aspiring uh, people that are continuing their education that come to our community from all over the world. So that's, that's some of the things that I really like to see um, in a community this size and I appreciate. Is there anything you'd like to say before I go? I really appreciate the, the fact that individuals uh, identify Waverly as a, a growing uh, community um, just up the road from a you know, major metropolis uh, in our state and we're not, we're not forgotten about. Uh, we are obviously seen as an opportunistic community and it's always a pleasure to, to provide a, a different insight and viewpoint to uh, individuals like yourself. As the mayor has stated, Wartburg College truly is important to the town of Waverly, and it has been around for a long time. On another note, Waverly even has its very own hydroelectric plant. It was established in the 1880s, and it still produces power to this day. Uh, my name is Jordan David, and I'm the head golf professional at the Waverly Municipal Golf Course. How long has this business been in Waverly? Uh, this business was uh, to, created in 1929. Uh, it's certainly been developed an awful lot since then. Right. What does your business offer to Waverly? The business offers uh, recreation, I guess I would say. Uh, especially important over the last few years, especially when COVID uh, came through, uh, we exploded a little bit by having an outdoor recreational safe activity to do um, and, and like we said we have been doing since 1929 in Waverly so what about Waverly makes your business thrive uh, the municipality of it you know truly it's a business that's open to everybody um, sometimes in the golf world uh, golf courses can be a little bit stuffy can turn people away um, I don't think we've got that at our facility I think this is truly a place that is open and available to to everybody a few more outdoor activities include a dog park, brand new baseball diamonds, a soccer complex, and so much more. My name is Connie Yonda. Um, I like the small smallness of Waverly, yet it's big enough to have everything that we need right here in town. What is your favorite thing to do in Waverly? One of our favorite things, especially during the summer, is when they have Revive, which is a Christian concert here in town. It's kind of associated with the fair, but that's one of our fun things because there's fun things for the kids to do. The adults can kind of relax, and it's just a fun family event. In your experience, how would you describe the culture here in Waverly? Um, that is a hard one, but we kind of have a diverse culture-ish, I would say, with Wartburg in town. Um, it's a safe culture, which is nice. We don't have to worry too much about um, our kids playing with other kids in the neighborhood and that sort of thing. So I, I would say it's a safe culture. Another unique location in Waverly is the Sub City Restaurant, which used to be a train station years ago. It is one of my personal favorite restaurants in Waverly. My name is Jennifer Peters, and the thing I mo like most about Waverly is the community events and things that I can be involved in. In your opinion, what town event is the best one in Waverly? Uh, Oktoberfest, which is usually in September. <laughs> Are there any final words about Waverly you'd like to share to the people watching? Uh, overall, I, I love Waverly. I've loved it for a long time, um, and with the river and the various events and things that 
you know, you can immerse yourself in and get involved. Um, I think it's a great town to be a part of. Something that I can't forget to mention is the brand new Bremer Brewing Company. It has become extremely popular and they are growing every day. My name is Dawn Stover and the, one of the things I like most about Waverly is the smell of Nestle floating through the air. I always tease that it's like living in Wonka land. In your opinion, what town event is the best one in Waverly? Uh, I really like the county fair. I enjoy the music acts and just the, the atmosphere and the smells and the kids and watching everybody do what they do and the chickens. Chickens are very important. Are there any final words about Waverly you'd like to share to the people watching? Um, I think Waverly is a wonderful community. I enjoy the people here and being a community with outdoor things like the rail trail and the nice parks and just, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful community to live in. It's clean and I would recommend anybody moving to look at Waverly. Now that you know what Waverly is all about, I'd like to say that growing up here is actually great and I'd recommend coming to Waverly for your next mini adventure. This is Spillville, Iowa, home to the Czechoslovakia pioneers. The town was founded in 1860 by German folk that grew into a refuge for Czechs. It was also the hometown to famous clock workers Frank and Joseph Billy, in which who are known as the Billy Clock Brothers. The Billy Brothers lived on a farm outside of town, and in 1913, in their, when they were in their 30s, they decided to go ahead and uh, get into clocks, clock making. We don't know why, but they were inspired, and so they started with smaller clocks, graduated to larger ones, and the museum was out at their house. And for many years, people would come out uh, to, even famous people would come out to their clocks, sometimes a thousand people a day. And then in 1943, uh, about when they were in their 60s, it, it, the clocks came to this building. So with the history from Anton Dvorak, it was a nice match. Not only was Spillville, Iowa a home to the Billy Clock Brothers, but it also became a res residential town to Czech composer Antonin Dvorak. Antonin Dvorak spent the summer of 1893 composing strings music for the town, some of which are called Himazordak, E major quintet, songs for motherhood, and the New World Symphony. Antonin Dvorak, the composer from the Czech Republic, uh, he had lived here with his family, which was uh, seven, eight people upstairs in our museum. So this was their home only for a summer because he worked in New York and came here to, with his children because there was a Czech community and uh, it was a place for him to come and relax when he couldn't get home to his native country. In today's society, music is still a huge part of this town. Spillville has been known to holding lots of concerts for genres of music such as heavy metal, country rock, and rock and roll. The Billy Clocks Museum and the Antoine and Dvorak exhibit still stands to this day. A uh, primarily Czech town. We have one of the oldest Czech schools in the, if not the oldest, in the country. Um, oh, I forget the year the church was born, or born, was built. It was, uh, it's a beautiful old church if you ever had a chance to go look at mm -hmm. it. Um, there is a lot of the the altars there and, and the iron crosses, those were all by local artisans mm -hmm. and and it's just a nice small town to live in. There's a lot of weddings pretty much all summer long. There's weddings here and dances and uh, we have a lot of live music on our stage that we built on the park. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's just a small town. I mean, you got you to gotta create your own fun, I guess. <laughs> After years of hand carving wood and composing creative art has really paid off. This is downtown Charles City. 
right on Main Street. Charles City was established in 1852, six years after Iowa became a state, and then later became a township officially in 1854. Charles City currently has a population of 7,821 people. It's a small town with big hands. When our current mayor before me retired, that's right when I retired from being a dentist, so I decided to run for mayor then and was I lucky enough to win, so. Yep, Dean Andrews, Charles City mayor, retired dentist. I used to be a dentist in town. And how long have you been the mayor of Charles City? This, I'm just starting my sixth year. I was elected in um, 2017, I guess it was, and so I started January of 2018. So this is just starting my sixth year. How long have you been a resident of Charles City? Since 1977, so it's that 46 years, I guess. I came here right out of dental school. What made you want to run for mayor? Well, like I said, I was on the city council for about 18 years prior to that. Um, and then I was off for about six years and wasn't on the council. And then when I retired from being a mayor, because I had, I mean, from being a dentist, I had more time. And so it gave me the time to be mayor. What do you think makes Charles City stand out from other small towns in Iowa? When I ran for mayor, I ran on a platform of, of positive and progressive. And I think that's what Charles City is. I think we're a pretty positive town for the most part. You know, we did the Whitewater course here um, 10 years ago or so. And when we first did that, we were the first Whitewater course in Iowa. And there was a lot of people said, oh, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. Well, it's turned out we, the park board persevered and did it. That's when I was on the city council and we did it. And it's been a really positive for our community. Not so much that people even are using the whitewater course, but it's just made our river so much more accessible and people just go down to the river a lot more, whether it's for lunch or to read a book or whatever. What would you like people to know about Charles City? I think that we're a, t a town, again, there's a lot of different opportunities. Um, we're very um, fine arts oriented, I think, for our size of town. We have a, a local art center in our old Carnegie Library building. Um, we have, we've just been doing lately, the last couple years, we've been doing these murals in town. We have a lot of uh, public art pieces in town. Our library has a Mooney collection of, of works of like masters, like Picasso and their, their etchings. But, uh, the, you know, a lot of, worth a lot of money and it's at our local library and people don't realize that. And so I think we're very um, strong in the fine arts. But we also have, you know, night, you know, when I first came to town, White Farm uh, Tractor Company was a big deal. That was, but that was right when it was just first starting to kind of uh, go down because of the farm crisis in the 80s. That was hard on the fat tractor industry. But right now we have, you know, a lot of industries in our industrial park between Zoetis and Cambricks and um, Trelleborg Tires and Winnebago. So we have a lot of strong industries. So we actually have a lot of really well-paying jobs in our town, which is nice. Um, that people, you know, I know all those places are looking for workers. So it's not like you say, well, you know, there's no jobs in Charles City. There's a lot of jobs in Charles City and good paying jobs in Charles City too. Not really, I can say just the fact that I think for our size of town, I, you know, there'll be some people that would probably disagree with me, but I think we're a pretty progressive town for our size of town. We do a lot of things that maybe other towns our size don't do. There's all, and people are open to doing some different things. That's, that's what's nice, that you know, if somebody comes up with an idea, you, know, you can give it a try. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but you know, people are open to trying some different things. So I think our, our festivals that we have, whether it's, like I say, the Party of the Park, or Artifest that we, has been going on ever since we came to town 47 years ago, that was going on. And um, you know, our big Fourth of July celebration that we have, I think our festivals are, are very, um, good for our community. It brings people to our community, but it also gives people in our community some fun things to do. Hi, I'm Jeff Otto with Otto's Oasis, and my wife and I own Otto's Oasis here in Charles City. We've owned the business since 2007, which we're going on 17 years now. We are a full service floral shop, garden center, greenhouse, landscaping company, and we are open all year round. Um, we grow our own poinsettias, most all of our plants, flowering baskets, just about everything you see. Um, we have a nice, a nice stock of trees, shrubs, perennials. 
and we're helping do-it-yourselfers and we can install also with our landscape crew. Uh, what inspired you to start this business? I started working here in high school and worked pretty much all the way through college and ended up doing landscaping and moved away for about six, seven years and then came back and bought the business in 2007. What's your favorite part about owning a business in Charles City? Um, I like doing business in Charles City. I grew up here and I know a lot of people and it's, I like to work with people that I know. Um, it's great, we can be a benefit to the community, help it grow and we're just an asset with everything we have and we draw a lot of people in to buy our product. But there's also a lot of downfall. One of them, the biggest, is trying to find help in labor right now. That's probably a big downfall, trying to find the help. Uh, my name is Levi Nyman. I have lived in Charles City f since I was five, so it's about 15, 16 years. My name is Isaac. I've lived here for 18 years. What's your favorite part about Charles City? I love the community in Charles City. It's very welcoming, um, very diverse. Everybody tries to do their best to understand each other. Um, I like that there's just a lot of nature to walk around in and be around. It's, uh, it's a pretty comfortable place to live in. It's a good place to create a family, watch your kids grow up. It's a very pretty safe environment. Good place to like create some morals. It, I mean, for big cities, small cities in Iowa are just better. It's, big cities are just awful. Is there any negative feelings you have towards Charles City? No, not really. There's not a overwhelming amount of opp um, opportunities, but it's a, you're always able to find something to do, hang out with some people. It's always enjoyable. I feel like the only negative thing about this city is just, um, you always got those crazy people who just can't mind their own business and try to mess everything up. Uh, I wish there were more activities to do, not just like a movie theater or like a bowling alley, but more outside activities where you can just kind of run around and something's been set up. Yeah, um, kind of going off what Levi said, I wish it was like you could have like a skate park or something, but no, we got a pool. It's an enjoyable place, definitely some place you can, if you're bored, walk around and see what, the, what it's got to, ha what it has and what you can do. Overall, it's not a bad town to live in, but it's all we got. Hello, I'm Garrett Barnes, and welcome to Reedland, Iowa. Located in northeast Iowa, this small beloved town is home to 857 people and one old grump. Established in 1904, Reedland has been a steadily growing community, rich with history. Reedland has grown street after street since it was born and now it has a select group of small businesses running in its core. Although Main Street is being renovated at the moment, this small town's bar is still running full swing. Grumpy's, a clear homage to the town's mascot, has really put this town on the map. I think that Grumpy's has put Reedland on the map. It's brought everybody from all across the state into our community and they've really enjoyed coming here and are, you know, it's just putting Breedland on the map. I think it's bringing a lot of people to this community that normally wouldn't come here and they're getting to just see like how loving and friendly we all are and it's become a family. And coming into this community six months ago, I was, didn't know how I would be treated. It's, it's kind of mind blowing for me. Everyone treats you like family once you get to know everybody. It's really a very nice close knit community and I feel like I'm welcomed. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and customers the same. You're going to feel that when you're here. You get to know people and yeah. With Grumpy's, Main Street's seen its most parked cars on the street since the 90s. Reedland holds four churches along with two elementary schools for your children. The locals couldn't agree more that this town is a great place to start and raise a family. Well, Reedland to me means small town living. 
Riva means to me uh, just quality small town living at its best. Well, it's all about community service. And to me, it's not about uh, somebody's got a job and got to do it. Uh, it's about uh, looking out for the citizens of Reedland and doing what we think is best for them. Um, I was born and raised here, and I knew from the time that I left to go to college that I wanted to come back and raise a family here just because of the community itself and the, the members that are involved in the community. It means knowing who your neighbors are. It means relying on your neighbors in, in certain circumstances. It means uh, talking to your neighbors. Take a lot of pride in them. And try and be good stewards of the our neighbors. It's uh, community service is what being mayor is all about, and and having the gratitude of that. And looking out for one another, and and freedom. It's we're we're free to do whatever we want. We're not constrained by big city rules, but. Freedom means, I mean, Reedland means to me freedom, I guess. If you had to describe the town of Reedland in three words, what would they be? <laughs> you can take your time on this. You know? Be best small town. I grew up on a farm north of town, but I've always gone to school here, and I've lived in my current home for 50 years. Um, we're 50 miles from anything in any direction, any bigger town, and so it's hard to get businesses here. We're in the middle of nowhere, really. The town doesn't grow a lot for that reason, but um, I think that's what's made our town unique. Uh, it's a great place for children. It's beautiful. We have the river running right through town, and so no matter where you go in Iowa Falls, there's always something really pretty to look at. It's pretty flat, but still, because it's a small town, and so there's a lot of community feeling, and, and uh, you know your neighbors for the most part. And people get along, I think, pretty well here. We hadn't necessarily planned on staying in Iowa, but we kind of looked around and we just, there were lots of parts of Iowa that we hadn't been in and we just kind of took a two week trip, kind of toured around. Hadn't planned on buying a restaurant that was already established, but this place was just really neat. We moved here to buy the restaurant and the princess has been here for over 100 years. At first I was kind of unsure of the name the princess, but it has a really neat story behind it. It's the name of the ship the original owners immigrated to the new world, you know, many years ago. It's just a, the largest remaining soda fountain in the U.S. thought to be in the world, which is pretty amazing. Supposedly Walt Disney offered to buy just the soda fountain years ago. He wanted it for a, for a movie set, but they wouldn't sell without selling the whole business. President Eisenhower thanked the original owners for having dinner in here. So President Eisenhower has actually been in here and had dinner, which I think that's amazing. There was an actress years ago that worked here. Her staging was Madge Meredith, and she was from Iowa Falls, worked here when she was younger. Well, she went on to be famous and worked with Marilyn Monroe. She came back for the, the 40th anniversary, and uh, Marilyn Monroe sent like a telegraph saying she was upset that she didn't get invited to the party. I grew up in Iowa Falls. I went to elementary school here. I went to high school and I went for two years to junior college at Ellsworth. So I was lived in Iowa Falls till I was 18 before I went on to UNI. I lived in Dallas-Fort Worth area for 30 years and um, they don't understand anything about a small town in the Midwest. And my thing is when I come back, every year I came back, I didn't want anything to change because I love my hometown so much so I like it all to stay the same. So there have been a few changes. Um, in our places of beauty that have kind of disappeared, and I hate to see that. So Iowa Falls is a scenic city. It's a beautiful place, and I want it to keep all of its beauty, so I just don't want it to change at all. 
I liked living in Dallas-Fort Worth. I liked lots of things to do. I liked the cultural things, but I also got really, really tired of if you had to run to the grocery store to pick up one thing you forgot, it would take you an hour. Um, it just, uh, it's a slower pace. You have your neighbors. You know everybody. Your teachers are here. Your people are here. It's just my place. 